Hello everybody and welcome back. It's a really exciting day for me because to begin with, I've got to go to the convent and something that I've been wanting to get started for a very long time starts today. So I'm really excited. I'm really excited to hurry up and get back before the sun gets out and it's too hot. So I'm carrying my stuff here. So let's get to the convent first and get back here. It is an exciting day today, everybody. Because I'm pulling Billy's Range Rover out of the garage convent. Oh, that's, that's, uh, that's, it's the time, Billy. It's time, isn't it? It is, mate. <sighs> it's very heavy. Are you trying to push it? Oh, all right, I'll put the camera down. Hang on. Uh, stop! Oh, I'm scared to push stuff on the back here. Yeah? Alright, so, right, let's watch that. Get, grab that reel wheel, mate. Got the wheel, yeah? Yeah. Alright. Good. Everyone, come, from viewers at home can watch me. Pushing the, pushing the bonnet yeah, out pieces. Yeah, right, you in charge. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no worries, mate. So here is, well it's not quite the barn find, it obviously came from somewhere else, but it's been in the barn for a long time. Here is the barn find classic. And it is classically Range Rover as we can tell by all of the dents and all of the rust. But underneath all of that, there's something worthy of getting saved. So obviously we are in France, this is obviously left hand drive, it's a manual. Balmoral edition, apparently only 200 ever made. And it is, well, yeah, it's typically a Range Rover. Right viewer, now I'm at home and we're alone. I will share my actual thoughts on this. As you're all aware, Billy and I are no strangers and in fact fans of Range Rovers. I have two. And I was with Billy. We went to pick this up when he went to buy it all that time ago. Um, before he bought the convent, so he wanted to have this project. But this is no simple project. It is, um, yeah, rough. It's, it's rough. That's what I'm gonna say to this. Um, but it's doable. I'm obviously blessed that I have access to a workshop. A friend that has one will lend me some space in the corner of his, which means not only can I try to get on with that, I have some helping hands while doing it. And it's something that Billy really wants done. He started to repair it. And then of course the convent came along, so he didn't have the opportunity to carry on with that. And then it's just sat there gathering dust and bird crap um, in the garage at the convent. Lots of people will sit there and go, I surely I am already too busy. Yeah, I sort of am. 
but we all need to have our hobbies not just something to do with a big house and a renovation and I do need to take my mind off lots of things so this is a great way for me to do it and I get to document it on the other channel which is the car chronicles there's a link in the description and stuff like that um, no videos yet because we've just picked it up and I look forward to doing that I appreciate lots of you are not into cars some of you are so those that are you can follow that elsewhere now I do have a couple of things I need to explain the algae here in the moat and the aeration system and some of the queries regarding the moat need to be explained this mostly is the aeration system and lots of people didn't really understand how it all worked so inside these two boxes are basically compressors pumps which will put air through various different bits of pipes and then in fact, these diffusers go in various different places all around the moat so it's all around the house and then air is pumped into these and you won't really be able to see but it's full of little microscopic holes where the air will come out as air bubbles and not only will they add oxygen to the water they will create a reasonable little flow which will also help with stagnant water so that's how that system works and the why do get a lot of comments whenever it comes towards the moat is why keep it well it's an architectural feature of the property so no it's not getting filled in despite multiple comments uh, to that end why would you fill in an architectural feature for a property like this that's kind of missing the entire point about looking after and trying to save a building like this if you're just going to destroy the architectural features for ease it's not really how it works on top of that can you hear nature here the water surrounding the property is why there is so much nature here yes there's lots of trees for the birds but there is an abundance of wildlife here for the reason they have access to water ignore the the fish and all the things which live in the water uh all the insects which yes I could do without with without as many mosquitoes they're there which means the bats are here and everywhere um kingfishers swooping down uh, around the moat the entire point is that is the heart of the nature here and and why it's so wonderful to be here so no the moat doesn't smell two it's not getting filled in three why, did, why keep it? It's not defensive anymore. No, it's an architectural feature, but it is also literally the reason why this place is so beautiful and so surrounded by nature. So hopefully that should be the last of the queries regarding why don't we just fill the moat in. <laughs>